As usual, uh, our drop-ins are for you um, to have a space to ask us questions and also we have opportunities uh, to speak to our guest speaker. Um, so we will be starting with our guest speaker who is, please correct me, I don't know actually whether I'll be pronouncing this correctly, Shauna. Um, and Shauna has been working at Wageningen University and research for four years. Uh, first, she worked in RDM support and now is a coordinator of RDM with Wageningen Data Competence Center and has a background in marine ge in geochemistry, a PhD from University of Utrecht and master's from Wageningen and is originally from the Aran Islands, west of Ireland. So I'll mute myself and I'll let you to speak now. Uh, Magdalena, thank you very much. It's it's very strange to hear yourself being introduced. It doesn't happen to me very often, but it's been a while. But it's it's it, it, yeah. Like Magdalena said, my name is Shauna. Um, I don't think she chanced pronouncing my surname, but I'll <laughs> I'll let you know what that is. That's Shauna Nielaharta. Uh, I'm from Ireland. I've been living in the Netherlands for a very, very long time. And for the past four years, I've been working in Wageningen in data management. Thank you for uh, asking me to give a short talk today. Um, Magdalena, can, I, I have to be honest, I didn't read the instructions <laughs> that you sent me. I assume, though, I just need to click on share screen somewhere and, right? Okay. I, I hope you can see at the bottom of your screen, it says it's share it. screen. Yeah. Yeah, okay. it should work for you. So I can just get started. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. OK. Welcome, everybody, as well. I'm seeing all of these names of people that I, I don't know. It's really great. Uh, OK. Do you see it in presenter mode? I, I can't see you at the moment, so if uh, we let me know. We can't see anything at the moment. I'm just oh. checking. I make you a co-host as well now. So mm -hmm. if you if you try again, hopefully it will work this time. Okay. I'll give it another go. Click share. Okay, so I shouldn't, but it's not yet in presenter mode. Is that right? Yeah, so that's I correct. Click on this. Is it now in presenter mode? All good. Oh, good. Okay, yeah, let's get going. Okay, the most awkward part of the presentation has now ended. Um, <clears throat> so I'm going to... You know, I had no idea what I was going to talk about, but then I realized, well, we've been doing this thing in the past couple of months. We've been working with uh, a group in our university. It involves DMP online. Let's talk about that. Um, and it was actually a, a really nice process for us. I mean, and I gave, this, I gave it this really fancy name called creating a consensus-based data management plan. But it was the first time that we were involved in that kind of process. So I just wanted to um, today take the opportunity to just, first of all, to highlight Wageningen and why it's such a strange university to do data management in. And second of all, to show you some of the challenges that we had with this process and I would love to hear from you guys if you've done similar things and 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 how that went for you okay so it's just going to be a short presentation today um but first I need to tell you about well, I need to put this screen thingy away yeah okay I need to tell you about Wageningen as a university because like you're probably wondering well Wageningen University and Research that's an odd name isn't it for university don't you do research in a university so why do you have to have a double. Well, Wageningen, um, first of all, is a very specialized university, okay? The focus, is, you can see it here, is on society, food, and the environment, okay? So we don't have medicine, we don't have law, we don't have an engineering faculty. Um, this is really the focus. It's life, it's a life sciences university. 
What makes Wageningen unique is that Wageningen University and research is in fact a combination of two separate organizations, okay? But the data management support is given across all of that. So what we have are two sides of one coin. One side is the university, okay? And here are all the details about the university that you don't need to read, but we have a university, okay? But what we also have is we have a whole load of research institutes, okay? So we have these two kind of separate entities. So the university is, is one thing, and then you have something like 10 different research institutes that are also attached to each other, and we give support for all of those together. Okay, so this is the dreaded organogram, okay? So I've been working there for four years and I feel like now I've gotten a grip of how uh, Wageningen is organized. But I, what I want to highlight here, because this is really the core of the, you know, the, the question that came to us about creating a data management plan was the following. So in green, you have the university, okay? And Wageningen is funny in that Wageningen only has one faculty. OK, <laughs> and in fact, it's split up. The university part is split up into five departments. So that's that green part of this organogram. There are the five different departments in the university. Coupled to each department or hanging under them are the different research institutes. So these are traditionally institutes that developed completely, many of them completely independently of Wageningen. They're even located, you know, spread across the country. So in the example that I've highlighted, um, you have at the top like a, a, a column going down and it's called the animal sciences group. OK, so that's the collected term for the university department and research institutes that are somehow share the same topic. OK, so in this case, the animal sciences group has a department called animal sciences under which there's something like 15 different research groups and then the research side so the light blue you have three different research institutes Wageningen livestock research which happens to be on the campus of Wageningen Wageningen bioveterinary research which is in the north of the country and Wageningen marine research which is in the west of the country so these all developed independently and they have their own way of doing things um, but then the question came to us okay this was the goal at the level the director of the animal sciences group so the person who's responsible for data management across the board for animal sciences um, put together a project group uh, with three goals but one of the goals was to create one data management plan that could be used for every project created within the University Department of Animal Sciences and the three different research institutes. Okay, so that was the goal. Um, the challenge was, however, to create consensus. And let's be clear here, this is a pretty big one because you're talking about a university on the one side who has been working with data management plans for quite some time. And then you have research institutes who uh, have no requirement uh, when it comes to data man management plans quite often, may not even know what it is. And in some cases have never heard of a data repository because they've been doing, for example, contract research. They work with companies, they have contracts with the Dutch government to carry out uh, research. So they have a statutory role in research and they have all sorts of different standards and protocols for their data management, okay? But they wanted one, data management plan for the whole lot. Okay, so let me, I just have to shift some, sorry, I'm getting all these little notices that people want to enter the waiting room and I can't see some of my screen. Can you, can, do I need to let these people in or Magdalena, can you do that? I'm doing uh, it. Okay, great. Um, okay, so this was our start, start, starting point. So you had that project group, uh, top level of the animal sciences group. And they had a very clear mandate and it was very much top down. Uh, so that project group had uh, a representative from the university and then a representative from each of the uh, research institutes and not just any old representative, you know, quite a senior researcher or senior supporting staff member, okay, that were in that project group. So there was a lot of clout, a lot of authorization. Um, 
they also uh, the person that was kind of um, like the lead on this part of the project. So for the date one data management plan, got in contact with research data management support quite early. And that was that was interesting because um, in those discussions, uh, we were talking to people that didn't know what a data management plan was, didn't know what the difference was between a data management plan and, for example, a data strategy or a data protocol for a research group. Um, they didn't know what a repository was. So we were really starting from scratch, first of all, and just kind of educating them to a degree about data, data management plans. Now they have all sorts of people working under them that, that do work with data management plans, but they didn't have the awareness, first of all. So we had, we ha it was quite intensive because we had to have several conversations just going through definitions and not only that, but several conversations about, well, what, what you are actually wanting to do within animal sciences group is going beyond this policy that there is. Because in Wageningen, we have data policy and that policy says that PhD candidates have to have a data management plan. That's it. Okay, so there is no requirement from the Institute to have a data management plan for every project. Of course, if your funder requires that you do that, but on the, for all the research institutes, that's also not the case. So this is really quite new uh, to, uh, to implement this kind of policy for the entire science group. So in those conversations, uh, uh, they said, can you help us with a data? Do you have a data management plan? Yes, we do. Can you help us with, you know, can we have, can we use it as starting point? Yes, you can. But it became much more than that. And that's why I think I'm spending some time talking about this today, because it became a much longer process to get the data management plan done. So we from data management support had a couple of ground rules. Now I'm putting it there like we were really strict and signing there Well, we're not doing it unless it wasn't like that. We were very much service oriented, you know, and there to support them. Uh, but we said, we think it's good that you start with the word with the institutional data management that plan that we already have all right just to keep things as simple as possible not to start from scratch and why is that a good idea because that is based on the science europe template for requirements for a data management plan so it will be aligned with other funders and other institutes um, and that in fact was um was really useful for them to know because that gave them so them being you know the project lead on this gave them a good argument to go to their other uh, members of the project group and say well we're using this not because because it is aligning you know at a european level with advice from science europe okay so there wasn't very much argument or discussion about which particular template to use anymore Okay, so that was the thing. That was our starting point. Um, we also said questions can't be removed from it. Okay, so all of these questions are based on the Science Europe document and we don't want to remove them so that it will also remain in alignment with, you know, the template that we're already provides for, for everybody else at the, uh, at the Institute. However, questions can be added if you want. If you want to mo know more, we can do that or slightly reformulated. Okay, so we were very much, our role as data management support in this process was very much as guarding the data management plan because a lot of these people, because they didn't have that much um, experience with data management plans, there was a real risk that they would chop something out of it that wasn't relevant to them, but may be very relevant to others. Okay, let me just click, yeah. Okay, so I'm just going to highlight now a couple of the challenges, uh, some of them very, most of them actually uh, pra practical. Okay, the, the biggest challenge initially was, um, and that was at the start, was the lack of famili familiarity with data management plans by the research institutes. They had never worked with them. They did all sorts of other things. And in fact, their data management is generally speaking way ahead of the data management that, that happens within the university, but they never worked with this kind of document and they were quite skeptical. Um, another issue was from our side, lack of familiarity with research institutes by the RDM support. So we weren't as familiar with their infrastructure, with their archiving techniques, 
Um, so we were using this template, right, the institutional data management plan, and that was really very much based on the situation at the university, and in fact, more so based on a PhD project. Okay, while a lot of the projects at research institutes are can be more complex, and they just have happen within a different framework. Okay, so they are using infrastructure in some of the research institutes that we were not aware of, so they weren't you didn't see that back in the original data management plan. They were archiving things in different ways. Okay, so this is just an example of that. So this is a question out of the data management plan and uh, about storage. Okay, and we give people kind of, they can tick where they're going to store their data based on the options that are provided to them from Wageningen University and Research. A lot of these, so you see our network drives, you see our um, managed cloud storage, and they also have the option for other, but you have this really vague thing in there and that's database and then within the brackets, internal organization. Okay, well, what is that? Well, I will tell you, we didn't know and the university side don't know, but everybody within the three different research institutes knew exactly what that was. They use their own internal large well-managed, well-described database. So it's a, absolutely um, a preferred option for storage, but it wasn't on our radar. So we had to add it to the list of options, it's quite simply. But, you know, before you've kind of clarified, what are we going to call it? Will it be clear for everybody? You know, you've had a couple of meetings. Uh, and another challenge was, and this is really, <laughs> this, is, this is a funny one. Um, word choice, we were constantly talking about words. Like for example, some of the research institutes had major issues with the word generated in that, you know, the question, what kind of data will be generated? That was problematic because they said our clients, because, you know, they do private research, research for government, uh, uh, you know, we call it contract research. Um, if they see the word generated, they might think that we're just making it up. <laughs> Okay, so we had to change or we had to add on. So quite often we were um, adding like collected and generated or in the guidance, you know, giving more information about what, what we needed there. So we had lots of discussions about words and meanings and we agreed to reformulate or or they agreed to reformulate or we agreed to reformulate or they would just accept it begrudgingly because they would see, okay, well, I'm the only person in the group who has an issue with this. So Okay, let's move on. Now that whole let's move on um, couldn't have happened unless the project lead on this was very clear. We are coming out of this process with one data management plan and this is our deadline. Okay, so this whole top down was uh, very useful in this particular process. Otherwise, I really believe if we didn't have, if there wasn't as much mandate and authorization from top down, we would have just been in endless spirals of discussions about words. Okay, so another challenge we had was some research institutes wanted to align with their specific data infrastructure. So we had one research institute that was actually much further with regard to maturity with data management and in fact are in the process of implementing this huge fair data infrastructure okay so th of course they like well we have this plan this is what we're going to be implementing in the next couple of years uh, we want to see some of that back in the data management plan that we're going to have you know require from these projects um, so they wanted to do that but the problem was all of the all of the infrastructure that they're referring to no nobody else would have any idea what that was or what that means. And what they actually wanted to do was to add all sorts of conditional questions. So if you answer, uh, if you click on the box for the type of storage that you use, then you'll get a conditional question specific only to that research institute um, asking about more information and links to you know, various links associated with that new infrastructure that we're working on. Um, so, we, we said no to that. Why? Because like I said here, it opens Pandora's box. If you give one party, uh, give them the space to add all sorts of conditional questions to suit their particular situation, then 
all of the other research institutes or the university department will want to do exactly the same and then it will it will not work anymore and it will become a nightmare i believe for all this research or, or support to um to maintain that data management plan and also to to you know add changes later etc cetera, etc cetera. so we solved that in the following way in the guidance, that's where we parked their specific things. Okay, so it doesn't completely jump out here. But the second last point here is use of automated data quality tools. Okay, so if a researcher from that particular research institute uh, goes to the guidance about data quality checks, um, then it will refer to something that would, they'll be familiar with. Okay, so we were able to park a lot of discussions um in the guidance without having to change the actual form and that was really useful okay so finally my conclusion um while we're there uh if you now go to you know Waching university and research we've got two data management plans in dmp online uh, so you've got data management plan, uh ask or animal sciences group and we are going to be uh, demoing it and presenting it next week for the whole project meeting and also the head of the uh, sciences group and it was it was an interesting process um because and for us very useful because what we learned is that in fact she in fact discussions about terminology wording what to put in the guidance, what's not clear, what is. That helped us make our institutional template even better because we had a very uh, varied group of people from a lot of different, uh, not different domains, but who work in a lot of different ways, who were all very critically looking at this, what was a generic template. Okay, so we've taken away a lot from this process, we have applied some of the things that we've taken away have applied to change or expand some parts of our institutional template. Um, so for us, it was it was a very useful, but very intensive process. I mean, I, I anticip anticipate in the next couple of years that the other sciences, science groups within Wageningen are going to follow a similar path. Um, I would, this is my, this is my last slide, by the way, I would love to hear from you guys if you've also had similar processes or not within your university and if you had similar challenges or completely other challenges. Anyway, that's all I have to say. If you have any questions, uh, feel free. I just stopped sharing. What a brilliant presentation, Shana. Oh, thank well, you so much. I don't know if it was brilliant, Magdalena, but, <laughs> but thank you. <laughs> I know, absolutely fascinating to see, you know, how, how complicated I personally, I had no idea how, how complicated it was putting together the research group and the university. Very interesting. I, I learned a lot myself, but unfortunately, I have nothing uh, to add or lessons learned, but Definitely, if there are people um, having questions or comments or Shauna, either feel free to type something or uh, unmute yourself. Hi, this is Rory. Well, if nobody else is going to ask a question, I will. I, I thought your point about terminology was both fascinating and, and fundamental. And actually your particular point about uh, this use of the term database, it, it comes up a lot for me because we think more in terms of, of data storage, data storage facility. And, and actually, uh, in, 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 believe it or not, we, we came up at a Max Planck Institute recently where they kept talking about databases. And we, we, we got a little, we actually had a meeting to say, what, what, what do they mean by this? You know this. This is an this is an inappropriate uh, 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 use of the word database. What can they possibly mean? And then we finally figured out that they probably meant some kind of data storage facility. But so I'm I'm guessing from what you're saying that in certain um, communities or certain aspects, cer certain parts of the community, this word this uh, word database actually means data storage facility, and, and it's such a fundamental thing. So I just wanted to thank you for, for helping to clarify my own experience and, and, and put that in, in, in context. 
Yeah, thank you, Rory. Yeah, exactly. We had no idea what they were talking about. We were like, why are they talking about databases, you know, in the storage story? Like it, it took a while, but they, they, you know, they park everything in their databases. And also they use that as a way to archive also. I mean, they do everything with these databases. And these are like these very uh, mature, developed, um, well-funded spaces. And you, we're not going to say you can't use that anymore. You know, these are great things, but it took us a very long time to figure out what, what they were talking about. And, you know, we added it to our list so that all of the research institute people also have a box to tick. Uh, but all the university people will have no idea what that is, you know, but they will hopefully tick, tick the other boxes. But yeah, yeah, yeah. it's all very relatable. I see there's a question in the chat uh, from Bram. Uh, I don't know if it's for me specifically. I Acting think Crow. that's one for us. <laughs> yeah, I think so. I, 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 I hope it is. <laughs> Patricia, <laughs> feel yeah. free. I think that that uh, looks to, to me like the organization might need to have a little tick. So if you get in touch with us, Magdalena, we'll, we'll double check that. Um, um, so that's. I think a setup issue. So um, drop us an email with your institution and we'll double check that. Um, but if there are more questions for Shona, um, there's one if, you, if you're willing to share the slides after the meeting. Um, yeah, if not, um, we'll definitely have the, the recording up pretty soon. Um, I have to say, I'm, I'm, I'm like just impressed by the organizational setup you had. Like I've seen, I thought I've seen like a lot of complicated setups oh. from university and I was like, wow, there's always something to. Wageningen is that. extremely complicated. <laughs> and you know, the policy, this is the, the beauty, of the, the policy that we have in place. Some of it was created quite a few years ago back so for example a requirement for a data management plan like i mentioned in the presentation that was that was that's been in place since like 2014 and in 2014 they only felt uh, confident enough to uh, apply that policy to the university side because at the time they were like well the research side they've got it all sorted because they have to comply with uh, iso standards for this and that and all sorts of other kind of project management standards um, but it's a university side that's an absolute mess so let's make that only a requirement for the university also let's make only the requirement to have a data protocol for example or a guidelines about how to work with data at the level of a research group only for the university and not for everything however then a few years later they came with more policy about you know storage safe storage about archiving data underlying publications and they spread that across the entire organization so both sides so we spent a very long time talking about why that's, you know, you actually don't, that policy doesn't apply to you, but please feel free to do it. But you don't have to from the organization. You know, it's very, very, lots of unnecessary um, conversations about that kind of stuff, but it's just, you know, it's just a little artifact from history and the complexity of the organization. Because back in the day, there was almost no collaboration between those two different sides of the of the university and the research institutes. It just wasn't there. They were completely separate, but they're not anymore. And we serve as data management support. We serve all of them. Okay, so we have to do that translation. Who will I send the slides to? Can I send them to Magdalena? Yeah, that, that will be uh, fine. Um, yeah. I, I'm like, I'm, I'm now wondering if you actually have it like uh, on your on your roadmap to update the policies at some point to just like, if you have like, or is it too complicated? You don't even want to start. Well, that, well it no, it, it's, like, it's not. Like, I, I don't think I don't think it's that complicated to, to take that step. Um, but, you know, we've spent like a year or two is communicating the policy we need to give the people a break before we come with new policy okay we need they need to start doing at least what's on the existing policy get that implemented before we kind of say hey let's come with new policy because it, it takes a lot of time but it's 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 definitely a good idea there are some gaps there but um it's not on my roadmap for the next year or two let me put it that way
yeah yeah these are these are long-term issues but i'm yeah. just wondering if like you know the, the fact that you're now going out and actually seeing what people are doing and how they understand yeah. things if that is like that's usually how you realize that like some streamlining um yeah you know yeah um, streamlining yeah. and gaps yeah yeah, but, because yeah. policy is a very slow moving process. And by the time it's being implemented, it's it's sometimes partially no longer relevant. You know, but that's what happens with, with policy. That's just the nature of the beast. Yeah. I mean, if you're pushing the practice ahead of your policy, that's mm. like, uh, that's not the worst thing either. Um, yeah. uh, Jörg has raised his hand, so I'll shut up and let other people ask questions. Yeah, I have a question. Thank you very much, Shauna, for the presentation. Um, okay. I'm working at the um, Swedish University for Agriculture Sciences, and oh. we do have a somewhat similar situation that we have. It's within the university. Uh, we have a research section, and we also have an environmental monitoring and assessment section. And that is probably a little bit similar to the to the research section in Bohningen, mm -hmm. which is also um, often contract based, uh, governmentally funded. Yeah. And as, as, as you say, also, um, they, um, the environmental monitoring and assessment, they have been, they're quite uh, mature in data management, they've been working with data management for quite a while, also using the words like database and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, and we're trying to now implement a data policy for the entire university covering both aspects and coming up with a data plan also that includes both both aspects and yeah. i was wondering um i've been looking at the dmp online and i was wondering whether it would be possible for you uh to maybe public make make your guidance public oh yeah um, because that would that would help me for instance uh, quite mm -hmm. a bit yeah. in um and implementing such a thing. Yeah, no, we can do that. Yeah, that's fine. Right. Thanks. Yeah, we literally, like uh, my colleague Irena, who's also here today, uh, she literally published it, I think, last week, Irena, I think. So it's all very fresh. We're still fiddling with it a little bit. Uh, yeah, no, we can make that all public. That's, that's no problem. Brilliant, thanks. Wonderful. It's always good if these meetings like spark conversations between uh, institutions that have a similar scope and uh, um, or set up. So that's exactly what we're here for, we hope. Are there more questions? I'm sorry, Magdalena, I'm talking over your time or your role. Absolutely not. No, I'm, I was just going to say the same. I don't know whether there are any more questions. Um, I can't see anything in the chat. So I think we can just slowly move on. Uh, but if people have more questions, please add them to the chat um, and, and we can just go back to them. There are a few more things, and many thanks, Shona, again, before we move on. Um, it's been very interesting to learn um, about your policies and how you work. And, and like Patricia said, it's amazing to see discussion going on and people experiencing the same challenges. So even going forward, having this video and for people in the future, seeing uh, what the exercise you went through might be helpful uh, for the wider community. So again, many thanks for sharing. Um, there are a few updates uh, Patricia and myself would like to share with you. Uh, I'll start uh, with the first one. Um, we are running our next drop-in actually in September. We will be having um, almost two months gap. Uh, next uh, drop-in session is going to be on the 23rd of September. Uh, we will be having a speaker from Umea University, um, Sana Isabel. But why I'm mentioning this is that we are uh, taking, I think for the first time ever since we launched uh, the MP online subscriptions and the drop-in sessions, for the first time we're having two summer, a uh, two month summer break. Um, and we are not actually just going to sit back and relax, but we want to revisit uh, these online sessions we have been running for you. Um, and we are running a survey over the summer. Uh, I might have been in touch with some of you already asking you to take part, but I would like to invite you again uh, to take part in the survey. 
I'm just sharing a link in the chat as well. Um, if you could um, take part and uh, let us know what do you think about online events and which type of events you would like to see, it'll be very helpful. The deadline ideally should be the end of July 2021, so we'll have the whole August to go through what you shared with us. We are already thinking about changing, for example, the amount of events and what we do. Um, one one of suggestions was also like having uh, more, I can't remember, Patricia, what it was called, that someone would show how they use it. And the, for example, the API from, uh, I think, yeah. you okay. Show and tell session. So a little bit like, um, you know, a bit like the in the the presentations you, you do here just that you know not with slides but you actually like show how you've set it up or some some yes. workflows um so um yeah a bit more like this um facilitating these discussions to to um learn about actual dmp online workflows from each other i think we we had had quite a Good overview of what people are offering uh, in, in general as as research data management support and how the MP online fits in the um, you know in the wider thing. But some bits of you know how are people really like setting up their workflows. I think is is what we're interested in in next because that also gives us a bit of a better understanding of um, new features that you'd like to see and uh, you know where where things are happening uh, or working or not working so much for you. And also talking about user groups, um, we, you know, we would like to run more of the user groups, uh, for example, and, and we, we want to change how we are running the user groups. Um, you know, with the, we introduced the voting prior decision and all of this, but Again, it'll be it'll be just useful to hear back from you. Really, if you if you could take a five minutes and take part in our survey and basically tell us what do you want to get out of these? Um, I think drop-ins are very good. Um, they give you the opportunity to speak to us. We love having a guest speaker, but again, just knowing which type of frequency, the length, um, whether there is anything else you want to learn from us, it'll be very very helpful because it will help us to plan for the next year. Um, thank Patricia, if you would like to share the news about the software developer tools. Yeah, um, we finally have that out um, for and open for applications. Um, so some of you might know that, uh, like basically had a, a vacancy in the team since mid-July for uh, a lead developer and have been a bit uh, smaller and under-resourced team. Um, and now that uh, job is finally out um, for, for someone new to join us. Um, so if you have any, you know, any um, really outlets where you could, could share this to just spread the, uh, spread the word, that would be great. Uh, we're, we're aware that we're looking for, or like that, that this is like a, a fa fairly niche uh, role that we're looking for. So if um, there's like, yeah, anyone that you have uh, in, in mind or like any, uh, any lists that you um, are on that have like, that are advertising these more um, support developer roles, please um, please spread the news there or let us know where we could um, where we could publish that role so we actually really get a good pool of um, applications. It um, should be remote friendly for uh, everyone that's kind of in a customer aligned uh, time zone. Um, uh, I, I'd say so if you can can work with um, in, in a similar time zone to us, plus minus a bit, um, that's, um, that's fine. So you don't need to be necessarily UK based if that, uh, if that helps. So please really like spread in your, in your 
local networks or um uh yeah just give us a, a retweet on twitter if you're there just to to get the word out um and then we hope that we can welcome uh, a new developer fairly soon Okay, another thing I just, uh, thank you, Patricia. Another thing I wanted to mention is that uh, some of you might have already joined us. I think it was last month, if I'm not mistaken, or was it this month? Uh, we ran user group, I, time is blending to me. I think it was actually this month. We were running a DMP online user group. It's been some time since our last user group, I think in Utrecht, which we ran in person. This was the first user group running virtually online and um, with Patricia. Um, and we think um, it went really well. Uh, we introduced the voting for our decision. And I would like you to invite you to read uh, about how it went. You can also see the recording. Um, it's, we have two unlisted recording, uh, which we can just share with you here. Um, and it would be worth to watch it because uh, like I mentioned, we would like to continue with these, I think sometime in autumn, we'll think about it over the summer when exactly in autumn. Um, but going ahead, we could save some time in the next user group if we already done the voting for our decision and we could just spend more of the user group discussing the features uh, rather than explaining, okay, these are the features, what do we want to do, how the voting will go. So I think it's just about basically our community of you, DMP online users, learning um, how to basically vote and how to go about new requested features. So read a blog post, have a look at the two unlisted videos. And if you have any questions about the user groups as well, get in touch with us. Okay, the uh, next bit is um, like um, kind of a, a reminder that we've sent out um, emails asking, um, asking you to set up an institutional login guest account or something for, for us um, um, at some point, or at least like, you know, look what, how, how you would uh, get to an account like that um, if needed. And that's basically um, an experience from uh, our, uh, some of our post um, Rails 5 issues that we went through that were quite some issues with institutional login that were really hard for us to, to fix without actually um, um, being able to log in uh, with uh, one of your institutional accounts. Um, so this is basically a fo follow up from um, that that uh, going forward this uh, this will be re, um, really um, yeah key for us to, to fix issues quickly when they um, arise so some of us who um, have come back with more questions we get uh, we'll get uh, back to you um, uh, yeah over the ne next few weeks in summer when it's a bit quieter to um, follow that up and we're also um, we had a big discussion around that at the at the user groups for for those of you who were there and for everyone else we're gonna um, summarize it again in a in a blog post to why we needed what exactly um, we need um, and that uh, hopefully gives uh, you more uh, to information to get in touch with any any local IT colleagues um, when when then it actually is needed. So that's uh, a reminder that this is something we will follow up on, but it's not urgent for you to do if that makes makes sense. Um, and I'll hand back to mm -hmm. Magdalena a bit for a Brexit update. Yeah, like so um, unfortunately, there is still no news, uh, but we are in touch with our legal team at the University of Edinburgh. Um, I think um, the European Union and UK should come to an agreement towards the end of June. So as soon as we have more information, we'll be basically taking actions. Um, in a case, there is no deal for customers who are based in EU will be uh, following up on what we started in December and going through signing up the model clauses. 
but we still hope uh, but unfortunately i'm unable to predict that um basically up until now everything has been the same so i i hope we'll just remain without any further changes but i just wanted to let you know we are aware it's coming towards the end of the mark unfortunately things haven't been released to us just yet and i think everyone is waiting edinburgh university is waiting so as soon as we have more information um we'll be getting in touch and like i said it'll be either just following up uh, with you uh, around signing up the model clauses which would basically ensure that the transfer of the data between the uk and um, our clients based in european union will remain exactly the same as it was prior brexit or it might be that there won't be um, any changes needed. But I just wanted to reassure you, it is in the back of our heads and uh, we are thinking about this and we'll be proactive doing the follow-ups with all of you in a case it's needed. Yeah, I think if anyone could predict anything Brexit related, they like be a very popular and probably rich person by, by now. Um, uh, I just want to highlight a, a last bit that is um, a DCC wide uh, event. Um, so if you're if you're missing DMP online sessions uh, throughout the summer, um, there's a DCC event happening uh, on the I think it's now 12th and 13th of July. Need to double check. Um, and yeah. We're basically doing another research data management forum, um, this time around uh, data stewardship um, models um, and roles and um, how that can could work in, in your institution. Um, so if this is something that you're interested in, um, check, check that one out if you can make it um, uh, the yeah, we haven't um, done RDMF in, in quite a while, but the one that we did virtually last year was um, actually quite interesting. So if if data stewardship is something that you uh, want to look into, join us in July for um, that session. Um, and then we are back with DMP online in September. Yeah, brilliant. Thank you. So um, I don't know whether there are any more questions either to us or Shona. If not, I think we can just slowly go uh, to the wrap up. We are sharing links with you from the last drop in session, which was in May. Um, we didn't have a guest speaker. Uh, but it's still worth checking what we discussed. So feel free to have a look. Um, if you want to be our guest speaker in the months to come, please email us at dmponline at dcc.ac.uk. It is always much appreciated uh, to have someone of you sharing with us either your research data management practicing using DMP online or working on new policies or anything that really um, isn't interesting and relevant to you. Uh, we love to learn about your practices at your organization and do not follow forget to follow us if you are interested in the future events and sessions which we'll be running on twitter at dmp online and our linkedin and subscribe to our monthly newsletter and our next uh, drop-in meeting will be on the 23rd of september so almost two months uh, but i think the time will fly in the meantime um how past then in the morning uh, with a guest speaker from Uma University, uh, Sana Isabel. So we hope to see you there. Uh, please take part in our survey. And many thanks, Shauna. It's been great to have you as a guest speaker. Thank you for your time uh, this morning. Um, and many thanks to Patricia and Ray and Diana for helping me to run the session. And I, I hope if you are able to have some summer holidays, enjoy your summer. And we, we hope to speak to you soon. Thank you, everyone. Have a good summer. We'll be, we'll be available with, via email, but you'll not see our faces for, for a while. But we'll still be here. Yeah. Have a good break, everyone. Thank you all. Goodbye.